Hi everyone, I am Anand, and my talk is about techniques to enable efficient analysis on evolving graphs. This is a joint work with collaborators from Google, Two Sigma, and UC Berkeley. Let me start by introducing Carol, a network admin at a large cellular network operator, where she manages thousands of base stations spread across a large geographic location. Her main responsibility is to diagnose problems happening in this network. For example, she might want to understand the reason for poor throughput at a particular instance in time, say at 9 a.m. Carol uses network telemetry data to help her diagnose the issue. She might start by asking, what did the network look like at 9 a.m., the time of the incident? From the data, she sees a bunch of devices in the network connected to different base stations. Being a network expert, Carol suspects the network congestion being the culprit. So she queries which of the towers experienced congestion at the time of the incident. The query result reveals that some towers were in fact congested. The next step in Carol's diagnosis is to understand why these towers were congested. For this, she might run some machine learning algorithm and interpret the results. To confirm her diagnosis, she ensures that the problem was transient by retrieving the data at say 10 a.m., which gives her a different picture of the network and repeating these queries. Today, Carol leverages graph analysis to actually run these queries. It is intuitive to think of network telemetry data as a property graph. At a given point in time, base stations and users are vertices, connectivity between them can be edges, and metadata can be stored as properties. Hence, Carol's job depends on retrieving hundreds of random snapshots of this graph structured data and running ad hoc queries on them. Unfortunately, existing graph systems do not support such analysis. Thus, many domains, including Carol's, can benefit significantly from systems that can perform efficient ad hoc analysis. Three main challenges stand in our way towards a solution. First, for users whose familiarity is with static graph processing frameworks and data analysis tools, how do we provide a natural and intuitive interface to work with evolving graphs? Second challenge is that of storage, as domains that can benefit from ad hoc analysis generate tremendous amounts of data. While today, cloud can provide virtually unlimited storage, ad hoc analysis requires efficient access to the data. Finally, extracting performance on queries that are both interactive, where the user is waiting for answers, and exploratory, where the user bases a query on the result of the last, is a big challenge in itself. Our work is based on two key observations. First, we observe that during ad hoc analysis, the user is looking at relatively small intervals of time where the changes to the graph are small. Second, we find that queries are frequently repeated on multiple windows that are close by in time. Based on this, we have built Tegra, a system that accelerates ad hoc analysis by sharing storage and computation. Tegra solves the three challenges using simple solutions. For programming, we propose a natural abstraction called time-lapse for interacting with evolving graphs. In time-lapse, we represent evolving graphs as a series of static snapshots. For instance, in our example, G1 could be the state of the network at 9 a.m., G2 at 10 a.m., G3 at 11 a.m., and so on, each of which can be seen as individual snapshots. Note that time-lapse represent logical time a user can make modifications to the graph at any point during the analysis. Time-lapse is exposed as a simple API which extends the graph interface in existing graph systems. The save and the retrieve API can be used to store and get snapshots from the time-lapse. For computations, Tegra provides the diff, merge, and expand API, which I will explain as we proceed. The challenge then is in efficiently storing and operating on time-lapses. There are two options in how a system can store the snapshots in a time lapse. First is to store the snapshots independently. This is the most efficient in terms of retrieval, but results in duplication of subgraphs that are common and known snapshots. The second is to store only the differences over time. This is the most optimal in terms of storage, but to retrieve a snapshot, the system must do computation. Thus, there is a fundamental difference between storage overhead and retrieval efficiency. Tegra solves the storage problem by proposing an incremental store that reduces storage overhead 
while providing efficient access. The key idea is to use persistent data structures, which retain previous versions upon modification. In Tegra, we use a persistent version of the adaptive radix tree to build a distributed dynamic graph store. We use persistent versions of the adaptive radix tree to store the graph. For example, a vertex tree stores the mapping between the vertex and its properties. Traversing the tree using the vertex ID retrieves the property. When a vertex is modified, path copying is used to provide persistence. So we only need to copy the leaf node storing the vertex and its parents. Traversing the tree from the first route provides all vertices in snapshot I, and traversing the second route provides all vertices in snapshot G. To build the graph store, which we call distributed graph snapshot index, Tegra partitions the graph in the cluster. In each partition, it creates two parts one for storing vertices and one for edges. The system enables access to snapshots in a consistent manner. Over time, DGSA accumulates snapshots. A user may start with snapshot I and at some point be working with snapshot S. There may be a large number of snapshots between I and S. Storing all these in memory is problematic. The design of DGSI allows us to store each leaf in the snapshot independently. Thus, we only require the leaves that are part of the active snapshots to be in memory. For instance, if snapshot S is the only active snapshot, then we can store all other leaves on disk. The final challenge is enabling efficient computation. Here, Tegra proposes an incremental computation model. Tegra leverages the graph parallel execution model. For example, the label propagation algorithm on a graph G1 can be expressed as a vertex program that picks the smallest label received from its neighborhood until convergence. Bootstrapping with the original labels, the execution completes in two iterations, resulting in R1. We exploit the fact that iterations of graph parallel execution can be viewed as a time lapse. Now, when G1 changes to G2, we can use time lapse to do computations only on parts of graph that change, thus enabling incremental computation. In this case, we have a new vertex D and edge A to D. Thus, vertices A and D needs recomputation. The diff API provides this information. For A to recompute the correct value, we also need its neighbor B. Timelapse provides the expand API for this purpose. Once A and B have recomputed, B and C can simply copy their state from the time lapse using the merge API. The process of diff, expand, and merge continues at every iteration until we get the final answer. The grass computation model has many unique properties. Since the intermediate state generated is the same as complete re-execution, any algorithm implemented in a graph parallel fashion can be made incremental. Further, due to decoupling of state from computation, it is possible not only to share state across queries, but also to use any state to do incremental computation. Finally, incremental computation may not be useful when modification to the graph are large. The graph computation model can switch between incremental and full execution at any iteration. And to do so, it uses a simple random forest based machine learning model. More details on all these aspects can be found in our paper. We have implemented Tegra on Apache Spark and have evaluated in, uh, it on open, several openly available graphs. We compare Tegra against several state-of-the-art systems. We use differential data flow and GraphBolt as the benchmarks for streaming systems and our own implementation of Kronos as the benchmark for temporal systems. We compare Tegra's graph store against Aspen and Graph1. I will discuss the main results more evaluation results are available in our team. The first result shows the ability of Tegra's distributed graph snapshot index to retrieve random snapshots. The x-axis here shows the number of snapshots in memory, and the y-axis shows the average time to retrieve a random snapshot from memory. We see that differential data flow and graph one shows an increase in retrieval latency with increase in the number of snapshots stored as they need to merge stored differences to create the snapshot. In contrast, Tegra and Aspen leverage persistent data structures and hence can retrieve snapshots without any computation. Here, Tegra is two orders of magnitude faster. Aspen is faster than Tegra due to its ability to compress the graph. 
The second result evaluates the overall goal of Tegra, the ability to do incremental computations on random snapshots. We assume that the system has been running for some time and enough state has been accumulated. For different graphs and algorithms shown in the x-axis, we retrieve a random snapshot and execute the algorithm. The y-axis in log scale shows the time taken. We see that Tegra is able to use stored state to complete the task in a few seconds. In contrast, the comparison systems are unable to leverage previous state and thus do full computation, making them eight to 30 times slower. Finally, we show micro benchmarks that evaluate the flexibility of Tegra's computation model. First is the ability of Tegra to switch to full re-execution when incremental computations are not useful. We create such a scenario by deleting vertices and edges in the largest component of the Twitter graph. We see that when switching is turned off, incremental computation takes more time and Tegra is able to identify this inefficiency and switch. Second is the flexibility in which state to reuse for doing computations. For monotonic computations, for example, additions only to the graph, many algorithms can be bootstrapped from the last answer. Since Tegra can start from any snapshot, it can simply use the last snapshot in time-lapse to achieve much faster convergence. To summarize, ad hoc analysis on evolving graphs is an emerging workload in many domains. We presented Tegra, a system that enables efficient ad hoc analysis using a combination of simple abstraction, compact representation, and sharing of storage and computation for both graph and the state. Our evaluation shows that Tegra outperforms existing state-of-the-art solution. That brings me to the end of the talk. Thanks for listening.